The fourth thing I'd like to talk to you about is the Rayleigh criteria. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I don't know if you say Raleigh or Rayleigh. I suppose it depends where you're from. I've heard it uh, pronounced both ways. I'm just going to say Rayleigh, but there you go. Um, what this criteria is, is this is a way to tell if two objects are actually two objects. So this might seem really silly, like of course I can tell two objects apart. Not really. If these two objects are far enough apart, you won't be able to tell them apart. You might have experienced this if you have your driver's license and, uh, or even if you're sitting in a car at night, for example, and um, you see what looks like one headlight, you know, way off in the distance. Maybe you see one little dot. And as it gets closer, of course, you see that it's two dots and you know it's a car or it's two motorcycles. But at some point, that one dot becomes two dots. Not in real life, it's always two dots. It's just that to your eye, um, it appears like it went from one thing to two things. That's because you had to be able to resolve them. When I say resolve, I mean to tell things apart. So when we talk about resolution, for example, in satellite imagery, when we know we're uh, up in space and we take a picture of the Earth, we want to be able to tell two things apart. So we can say, you know, how good is the resolution? So that's something that's sometimes important, is knowing um, if you can tell two things apart or if the, you can't tell them apart. So we'll say that, um, in this case right here, two objects are what we consider, what we say, just resolved. If we have this happening, so theta is 1.22 lambda over b. This is the main uh, equation for Rayleigh criteria here. Two objects are just resolved. Now what I mean by just resolved, I mean we can tell them apart. Now we better define some things here, and the most important thing I think to point out is this. This only works for a circular aperture. In other words, it only works if the thing doing the detecting is a circle. In other words, what I showed you before about diffraction, that worked for a slit. If you remember the equation for a slit when theta was just lambda over b, there wasn't the 1.22 there. And that one was to tell you about the first minimum. In other words, we looked at the graph of intensity versus um, angle, and the first minimum happened when theta is lambda over b. Here, this equation may look similar, but it's not at all for the same thing. First of all, it only works for a circular aperture, and um, it's got this 1.22, but doesn't tell you anything about the first minimum or whatever. Well, actually it kind of does, but what it really tells you about is if we can tell two objects apart. So maybe I'll define uh, these things just to be careful here. So theta is the angle. Uh, and that's measured in radians, or rad for short. If I was a Californian, maybe I'd like that. Um, theta is the wavelength of light. Of course, that's measured in meters. We should be getting used to seeing that. And B now is no longer the slit width, it's the aperture. And what I mean by that is, you know, the size of the circular hole. So there's a little hole here. How wide is that? So that's the aperture, or the opening, the hole. So that's what we have there. And maybe it's a good idea to look at what this means uh, of a graph of intensity. So here we're going to be graphing similar to what we had before with this nice Gaussian curve, um, which looks like, well, let's see here. This right here could be angle, theta in radians. And I'm going to, this uh, up here, um, whatever this is in the y direction, that's going to represent uh, intensity of light. But here I'm going to draw my first object's sort of uh, shape right here. So maybe it does this. You remember this from before? Whoops, uh, it should be symmetric, so I suppose it should actually go up a little bit more. It should look this, you know, these two sides should be the same. And this is centered around this. However, now this is one object. But now we're looking at a second object. So one object has this sort of light, and the other object also has one of these shapes. And the key thing is that when we were just resolved, 
This is the key thing right here, okay? The maximum of one of them is going to be the minimum of the other. In other words, lined up with the maximum right here, I'm going to draw the minimum of my other one. I'm going to draw it in green, so this will be the minimum. And that means that the minimum of the white one here is going to correspond to the maximum of my green one, so like this. So then I can draw it like this. Some sort of shape like this. The key thing is, and of course it goes up and it goes up. We don't really care about the other parts. I did a really bad drawing here. But the key thing is this. So the max of one lines up with the minimum of another. So that's how you know two things are just resolved. Now what I mean by that is this. These two objects, you know, depending on how far away they are, you know, if you think about the angle between these two objects, the angle is going to appear smaller if they're really far away. If it's coming closer to you, that angle is going to appear to widen, you know, as it comes closer. So this is what we mean by this. So the idea is that these two things can be a certain, you know, imagine this white curve and this green one, they can actually be different distances apart. So if they are further than this angle of 1.22 lambda over b, if they're farther away, we can totally tell them apart, no problem. What we say, there has to be a criteria where we decide where can we not tell them apart, and this is the criteria right here, that's the rule, is that we can just tell them apart if this happens, if the angle between them is 1.22 lambda over b. Okay, so in other words, this angle right here is going to be 1.22 lambda over b. That means we can tell them apart. So what happens then if the angle is smaller than that? Well, then we can't tell them apart. It's going to appear like just one dot. And so uh, then, I mean, maybe then you could, uh, you know, uh, think about what you can do with this information. You could think about, um, I actually read about someone getting out of a um, speeding ticket using this. Um, so apparently they were going, you know, really slowly, but then, uh, you know, a police officer thought they were going really fast. I read this in the paper, um, and it seemed like a neat story. I hope it was true. But um, what they did then is that the person who got the ticket insisted that they weren't the one who was driving really fast. So what they did is they were able to ask the police officer, apparently, um, you know, what kind of radar they used and uh, how far away they were. And from there, they were able to actually calculate using Rayleigh criteria that at that distance away, you couldn't tell me apart from a car beside me. In other words, you know, if there was like, say, a really fast car that was just passing me at that moment, you know, the police officer wouldn't have thought that it was, uh, you know, they might have thought it was you who was speeding instead of the other one who was speeding. So that's maybe one thing. Maybe you can use this to get out of speeding tickets, I suppose. Um, another thing this is used for, well, um, we can look at an interesting question with a satellite. And so actually that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. But the idea is going to be that we have a uh, satellite. Um, the reason why I invented this example, or at least not invented, but um, used it, is because uh, I've seen you know, some movies where uh, they show a spy satellite you know, up in space and they show it you know, being able to you know, see really close up picture of you or maybe they would show them, you know, I read uh, one thing where, um, in a book where they said that the satellite you know, technology is there to where they can read your fingerprints from space. So we're gonna look at that sort of question in the next example and see, could we tell your fingerprints from space? So that'll be, I think, an interesting question to ask.